back in 2012, I was studying at this magical place called the MIT Media Lab, the mecca of design and technology, a place where I was not only building the future, I was living in it day in and day out. I was working with designers, engineers, artists, filmmakers, making new products. I used to think about a future where I wanted to live in. Think of a technology that I wanted to make, just go and build it. I love cameras, I love photography. It was such a pain to go and take a photograph of your favorite scene, an amazing shot, and come back and see it's completely out of focus. The person is completely blurred out. I wanted to change that. So I invented a new kind of camera. A camera in which you can take a photograph, and the person is completely out of focus, but you can recover the focus back. I wanted to think of a future with a see-through displays. So I built a new, new kind of screen. A screen through which I can see daily objects and modify their shape, form, or size using my hand gestures. I thought it would be cool to see my bed or my sofa and make it bigger or smaller as I like it. But as I was doing this at MIT, I thought, why can't we do this in India? Why do you have to come all the way to the US to build this future? All my friends and MIT were Indians. And one thing I learned while doing engineering in India was that if we had an exam and there was one night left, <laughs> we would somehow find all the class notes, we would somehow find that one Magu guy who would make us teach, pull off an all-nighter and pass the exam. To put it very simply, we knew Jugaar like no other. The more I pondered about this question, I realized that the answer is nothing. Absolutely nothing is missing in India for us not to build the future here. So me and some of my friends at MIT, we started doing design innovation workshops. The idea was very simple. Just get young India together. Designers, engineers, artists, technologists, and have them build the future out of India. We went to big cities, small cities. We tried to find the diamond from the dust, the gems, and started creating crazy technologies. Technologies such as this, a fabric printer. Imagine a world where you never have to buy your clothes. You can just download them and print them. So we built a fabric printer in which you can input any material, any design, and get your garment out. And more than that, we added conductive threads. Threads which can conduct electricity, so that you can integrate biosensors into your garments. So now, you not only have your shirt, but a shirt that can sense your heart rate, your BP, your blood pressure. Or imagine a future of media. A future in which the content is not only trapped inside your glass screens of your phone and tablets, it's inside our daily lives. So we build a new window, a new interface, in which you can take any object and reveal the story inside it. Imagine a pillow, a magic pillow, with Ramayana inside it. You can't see it from your naked eye, but when you see it from this window, you have the story come out. Or I thought, wouldn't it be great if I can just go to a mall and I don't have to try out my clothes? So we build a new technology in which we can just project clothes on top of you. And with the tap of a button, you can know what shirt or what garment looks good on you. And all of this was not built by massive research labs or big companies with loads of money. It was built by people like Nitesh, Kostop, Shares, and many, many more of such kind. Barely in their 20s, they were helping us build the future out of India. But all these technologies that we were building, they would still take some time to come out of the market. I was getting impatient. We couldn't wait this long. We had to pull a out of India very, very soon. So I moved to India permanently and made a company called Tesseract. And we started working on a very different kind of camera. Every day, there are billions of photographs being shared all around. All flat images. But that's not how we see the world, right? We see the world in 3D. We see the world in 360. As soon as I realized that, the next steps were very clear. I wanted to make a 360 virtual reality camera. Imagine a world which you can take a photograph and share it. And when you see it, it feels as if you're right inside it. As if you have been teleported to that moment. Imagine a future in which you can sit right there in Hyderabad, but feel what it's like to be in a house in New York. Imagine a future where you can have 3D maps, not only of outdoors, but for also for indoors. And of course, we want this future to be accessible to all. We want this camera to be portable and small. And we wanted to build this in India. So we set out. I came to Bangalore, met my friend Sanjay, rode on his bike to an Avenger from Banaswadi to SP Road. That's a place you find all the geeky stuff. It was a long ride, my butt still hurts thinking about it, sitting in the middle. And we thought, how difficult would that be? Just take a ball, put many cameras, and be done with it. But in hindsight, it was not that simple. The ball didn't work out, we took a cardboard cutout and put six cameras. And we call this prototype Benzene. 
we loved organic chemistry, six rings, six cameras, benzene. Now this changed to a four camera design, to a three camera design. But we had one slight problem. The problem was it required three people to operate. One to hold the camera, one to hold the laptop, and me to press enter. I was like, we can't take this out in the market. We need to do something better. So after one month of effort, we made a portable product. We put the battery, we put the processor, we put everything, and now we could capture 360 and virtual reality images. This is one of the first images we captured with this camera. We were very, very happy. You know, the joy of creation is just like having a drug. Once you do it once and make something with your hands, you want to do it over and over again. We went and talked to many of our guys who wanted this. We started getting pre-orders. But we thought, we can't ship them a plastic piece, right? We have to make a full-blown product out of India. Now, any expert would tell you that if you have made a prototype in X amount of time, it'll take you 10x time to make a product. We made our first prototype in one month. With this math, it would have taken us 10 months to make a product. Let me add one more number here, 5x. Well, if you give no weekends off and work 20 hours a day, that can be 5x. <laughs> and we wanted to do it in less than 5x time. We had one more problem. We had no team. There were just three people working with us to make this product. So we made calls, first once a day, then twice a day, then 10 times a day. And finally, over time, we assembled an inter, or as we say at MIT, an anti-disciplinary group of individuals. They were designers, they were engineers, they were business guys, operational guys, coming from all over the country. Mumbai, Pune, Nagpur, Allahabad, and even Kashmir. We got them to our setup, and we started working. Now, when you make physical products, there are certain processes that are being followed. You follow injection molding to make plastic products. CNC milling and lathe for making aluminum or metal-based products. Your iPhone, for example, is CNC machined with a PCB inside it, which houses all the processor that runs your apps. And we thought, well, all this stuff happens in China, right? Let's go to China and make it happen in like Shenzhen. But then we realized, well, we tried to make a product out of India. Let's explore what India can offer. Yeah. Now, if, if you look at the products that you use all around, many of them are made out of India. Pune and Chennai are the automotive hubs of the country. Surat, Bangalore, Ahmedabad, all the circuit design and fab happens over there. And I thought, if all this is happening here, Bajaj produces motorcycles here, Volkswagen has a factory, my favorite Enfield is run out of here, then we should be able to pull something off from India. So we started talking to people. We went door to door. We went to big industrial shops, small setups around the country. We traveled to Pinya in Pune, traveled to Hinjawadi, we traveled to Manisa, we traveled to Andheri, places that people might not have even heard of. We tried to explain them my design, some got it, some didn't. Some wanted more money, some wanted more volume. Some wanted, what the hell are you doing? Why are you even doing this? And we thought, well, we'll somehow find our guys. After countless meetings and rejections, we found some of the guys who would fab it for us. Meanwhile, our three camera prototype had turned into a one camera design. This is what we wanted to fab. So work started in full flow. We used aluminum as a metal, thought it'll be light, it'll be robust, it'll look good. I was very happy that things were progressing really well until we hit our biggest problem, this. <laughs> now I'd gone to a shop in Bombay to buy shoes for myself. I chose the right pair, went up to pay the counter, card declined. I went again, card declined. Then my dad dropped me this message. I was broke. I just went out of the shop and sat down. And I was like, what the hell am I doing? Here I was the fancy MIT degree, sitting in India, having no money in my bank. Maybe mom and dad were right. I should have taken a high paying job. Or maybe my friends were right. Don't do hardware in India, it's hard, right? <laughs> Go. Go and build a software company, an e-commerce company, you'll make money. And I was like, I'm not in it for the money. I know hardware is hard. That's why I'm doing it. That's what gives me the kicks. And suddenly, miraculously, at that same point, I got a phone call from one of our clients. They had just given us an advance for the pre-order of the batch. I heaved a sigh of relief. We were out of this mess. I still didn't buy those shoes, just saving a bit more for one more rainy day. The CNC started to happen. The product was being made. The form was being accomplished. The team came together. We assembled the circuitry into one nice shiny piece of aluminum. From a single slab of metal, we were able to give it a form so that all of us can actually use it. The last thing, packaging, is one of the most important parts of the product. It's the first thing that a customer sees before even touching the technology. We had to get it right. So we went to Dharavi, Asia's biggest slum. You'd be surprised the culture and the economy is happening there. A million people working day and night, creating a billion dollar worth of goods. From garments to briefcases, 
to suitcases, injection molding, synth synthetic leather products. Everything was happening there. We found our guys and we pulled off the packaging. Finally, we had the product. A truly made in India masterpiece. Every bit, every atom was made out of here. The team had pulled through. So did India for us. This was high technology and design. A 360, a 3D, virtual reality camera coming out of India. Let me show you a glimpse of a video. Finally, after six months of effort, we shipped. We were all on cloud nine that day and really drunk that night. But we didn't want to stop there. We said, let's go a bit further. Let's create a 360 virtual reality video camera. For the very first time, we're showcasing a 360 virtual reality video camera. As a matter of fact, we recorded the whole talk in 360 and VR. Let me just give you a live demo of it. So this is me talking, and we just go right across to the audience. So this is the future, and it's happening out of India.